So you guys have been asking me for a long time what settings I changed when I moved from a 0.4 millimeter nozzle to a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. And today I'm gonna go over those changes for you. What we're doing here is we're now printing faster with about the same quality, which, which just makes sense. Why would you want to spend more time printing the same thing? Uh, on most of your printers, you can use these settings. Uh, for this one, I'm going over my Ender 3v2 profile. I use this same profile on just about every printer I have where I was able to put a 0.6 millimeter nozzle on successfully. So hopefully this video helps and I'm gonna dive right in because if you guys have been here before, you know that I don't like to waste a lot of time. So right off the bat, my initial layer height, I'm now printing at a 0.2 layer height versus a 0.16. My initial layer height is now set to 0.24 instead of 0.2. I always print with a higher initial layer height. I think it helps with build plate adhesion and we'll circle back to that later. Um, my line width is now 0.6 millimeters, which allows me to run two wall lines instead of three because I run a 1.2 millimeter wall. <clears throat> and that's where a lot of the time saving goes in because when you think about what a wall line count is, right? You know, it, it's, it's a wall line. If you're printing a circle and you've got three wall lines, it's going to have to make three full rotations to make that wall with the settings, with these settings, sorry. Um, it now only has to go around twice. So you're saving a full rotation on everything that you do. Think crystal dragons, think complicated stuff, think big stuff. That travel time on each of the thousands of layers you're printing is going to add up. So that is where you're saving a lot of your time is by reducing that wall line count. Um, the, the settings through here are kind of still the same. Sharpest corner, hide seam. Um, I'm running a top and bottom thickness now at 0.84 with four top layers, four bottom layers. Um, that I used to run, I think six. So again, you're running less layers because you're, you're printing thicker, thicker layers. <laughs> you know? So you don't have to do as many times on the top and bottom. So you're going to save time there. Uh, a lot of these settings are still the same, I believe, but I'm going to go ahead and stop. So you can kind of copy those if you need to infield density is going to be entirely up to you. Once you set your infield density, these settings should change, uh, respectively. I run no more than 10% on most of my prints. That's just me. I'll do a video later on how you can kind of play around with that if you need for whatever reason, like a thicker bottom and um, <laughs> a, a denser bottom and less infill towards the top. Um, that's an, another video for another day, but most of the time I never go over 10% and these settings will change accordingly. Same goes with temperature. That's going to vary entirely on your material uh, you do have to keep in mind that your nozzle diameter, while ever so slightly, is going to be bigger. So you may have to tweak your settings on temp just a little bit to prevent that oozing because it is going to be easier for the plastic to ooze from the nozzle. That's just the way things work. So that might be something you have to retune. Uh, I still pretty much run the same 205 for regular PLA, 210 for silk PLA. Uh, more if it's a specialty material like co-extrusions tend to run a little higher around 215 I've printed as high as 220 with that But that's going to depend mainly on your experience with your materials know your materials look up how they work print a temp tower Do what you need to do and uh, these temps should still be about the same Speeds going to be the same situation on my ender 3v2. I'm running 50 millimeters per second with 25 millimeters per second on most of the rest of the stuff it can probably print faster, but it's just not a fast machine. If you've got a machine that's more capable, turn it up. You're gonna print even faster. For, for this example, this is what I kind of use. Uh, these settings produce 24 hours or under Crystal Dragons, which is kind of what I base it off of. Um, so it, it's more than fast enough for me. If you feel the need to kind of tweak that and push it a little faster, then by all means, see, what, see if you can maintain the quality even faster. Let me know. Um, I have all these acceleration setting changes. I really don't know how much they help because again, on my machine, the Ender 3 V2s, they are limited. Settings are still the same though, just in case to try to make that travel time as fast as possible. <clears throat> Jerk settings are still the same. Retraction, uh, on my machine, on my Ender 3 V2, I'm running about five millimeters of retraction. I feel like it's a little less than I was running. I was running around six before, I feel like. Uh, Retraction's funky, you know, it's a different diameter nozzle. It's, this is a good base layout. Start with this. Uh, I run about five millimeters of retraction on my Bowden tube machines um, at 45 millimeters per second. And that's gonna work well for most of your prints. 
Uh, on Crystal Dragons, I find you often have to turn it down a couple millimeters to about three. I don't know why that is. If anybody knows why that is, let me know in the comments. But I find that on Crystal Dragons, you have to turn their attraction distance down just a little bit or else you get a ton of stringing. I don't know why, but that's, that's just what I found. Again, this is just for you to kind of have a base palette of your 0.6 millimeter nozzle settings so you can start printing faster with a larger nozzle on your Creality machines or any machine that you can get an appropriate 0.6 millimeter nozzle for. Uh, Cooling is going to be the same. Supports are going to be a little different. Obviously, for this print, we don't need them but I'm going to go over them. Um, I've been running a lot of tree supports lately. They're just easier to deal with. Normal supports use a lot more material. I've, I've finally become a tree support user. Uh, I run at a 49 degree angle. I've got one, two, and five for my distance diameter and diameter angle. Uh, my collision resolution is 0.3 millimeters. I place them everywhere at a 49 degree overhang angle. Uh, I use zero density, and that's kind of the secret to these tree supports. You can run density if you want to, but you're gonna sometimes they're gonna be really hard to pick off still. Most of the time, a tree support can print with a 0% density, and then you get those kind of crumble away supports that you see in a lot of my videos where you just kind of peel them away and they're gone. That's because I'm running zero density on those supports. Um, top distance, 0.2. XY distance, 1.2. I use interface, roof, and floor. Uh, 0.8 millimeter interface. Uh, 0.2 millimeter resolution densities at 33.33% and these work excuse me 99% of the time I don't have a problem I don't have RAF settings for these nozzles and that's where I said I would circle back to when you're using a larger nozzle it is very very difficult to get that peel away rash that you can get with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle I just have not been able to do it uh, excuse me so it's going to become really important to fine tune those first layer settings, making sure your bed's clean, making sure your bed's level, making sure you're extruding the proper amount of filament at the right temperature, your bed's hot enough. I've cranked my bed back up to about 60 degrees for most of these. I've even started using a little project called Magigoo, not sponsored by them. I, I don't have a bottle of it around me or else I'd show you. It's, I found it on Amazon. It's it's really good for adhesion. You just put a little on and it really helps. If you can get a PEI flex sheet for your printer, I've got one on just about every printer that has the right size. With these settings, you're gonna print faster, but it's gonna be important to really get that first layer. <laughs> you're gonna save time by not using a raft anyways, but I just don't have good raft settings for you. You're willing to play with them, increase your air gap, stuff like that. I have my air gap up to as high as I think 0.4, 0.5 millimeters on an air gap before and sometimes they would still get stuck and at that point your bottom layer is just trashed so i've been using skirts a lot if i'm using supports i use brims so that all the supports have something to connect to i get some good magic goo on there i make sure my bed's nice and properly heated um make sure those first layers are real nice and even and i tend to not have a problem I, not as bad as i used to um that's going to kind of be the stopping point for this video. Real quick, I'm going to show you the, 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 the time settings difference when it comes to using these settings. Um, I sliced it just a little bit ago on my old 0.4 millimeter settings that I was using on my SVO2. And this print, which is the Zoo Ghost at 200 um, millimeters tall, so 417.3%. This print was going to take, I think, one day and 15 hours on my previous 0.4 millimeter nozzle settings. That's 0.16 layer height. That's still 5% infill. That's no raft. That's uh, kind of the similar speeds. Um, and, you know, everything else. It, it, that's on my basic 0.4 millimeter nozzle settings. And I'm going to slice this real quick with, with these 0.2 layer height or uh, 0.24 base layer, 0.6 millimeter no nozzle settings. And we're going to see how much time we've shaved off just by inputting these values and upgrading the nozzle. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we're down to, you can't see it because my head is right in this area, but it's now down to 21 hours and 23 minutes. And this is a big print. This is 255 grams worth of filament. And we've now cut off two and a half, then 50, about, about 17 hours of print time. And I promise you, this is going to be very similar quality. You, you'll, you'll barely be able to tell the difference. I mean, you're still gonna have that little bit of, where you can see the layers a little bit, especially on like top surfaces and stuff, but for the time difference, is 17 hours worth <clears throat> a 95% identical print? Absolutely. 
So hopefully these settings have helped. I'm sorry that I've delayed so much on getting this video out. I finally have this wonderful new mic that one of my Patreon supporters have given me um, so that I can help record more YouTube content, do more live stream content on Twitch. Um, if you're seeing me for the first time, I do lots of stuff on TikTok, Twitch, here, Instagram, everything as well. Uh, I'll try to have a link tree leak down in the bio so you can check out all that stuff. But I hope these settings help. And uh, I plan to get more content out very soon. I want to cover... Um, there's a, there's a lot of questions about support blockers and how to use support blockers, how to change specific settings with support blockers. This video is kind of a twofer. It had all of my settings, including my support settings and opinions and stuff. But if there's anything you'd like me to cover, please give me some ideas. Please give me some stuff you'd like to have my opinion on, things that I've, <clears throat> some settings or tricks that I might have picked up, something you don't know how to do, because I really do want to start using this platform more for long form content. Uh, that's kind of the, 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 the next year's goal i guess you could say uh i want to want let's see what am i at right now like two and a half thousand subscribers i'd like to see let's get to ten thousand next year that's kind of an easy goal right uh but anyways thanks for watching sorry i kind of rambled there at the end i hope these settings help and make sure you're subscribing and i'll see you next time